All right, good. That was good. That was good. Three consecutive series now in the Yankees' favor. They are uh, six and three in their last nine, so that's that's solid. So let's talk. Let's talk New York Yankees episode five thirty six of the podcast. We do have a guest later in the show, so you want to stay tuned for that. Let's talk. Welcome to BD Four, an RJ Carbone podcast. BD Four, where there is no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks. Analysis. We also do MMA. Yanks every series, Knicks every game, MMA on occasion. BD4 is a five star show on Apple Podcasts, also available in video format on YouTube and Spotify. So thanks for stopping by, and we hope you enjoy the show. Champion of the world, Turning, looking, see ya! Anthony for three. Creates and showing some dexterity as well with the left hand. Oh, 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 oh. Yankees win! Wow, a lot to unpack uh, after this one. Wow, that was um, <laughs> you start off with a series with with, uh, with a loss in the first game of the series against this terrible team, uh, the A's, and and then you get the perfect game <laughs> and. And then you get a big win today after being down 3-1 early on. Good. Uh, you, you know, you want the sweep. Uh, so I do think it was a tough series there. But you took two out of three. Um, you're never going to complain about winning. So, yeah, I, I think the Yankees are in a good spot. Um, more of a good spot lately. They're playing more... Like I expected them to play the last three series. They are. So we'll talk about it. And let's get into it right now. Let's recap the series. So we'll go over these games. Um, we'll cover a few talking points after that. And then later in the show, in the second half of the show, we'll get to the conversation that Greg and I had. Greg is from Yankee Crazy Podcast. If you want to subscribe to that podcast and download his episodes and um, go do that. Um, he joined us. He, he's been on the show a few times, and we go over the Yankees' progress report three months into the season. Now, I do want to warn you, and I'll do it again before we pan to it. We did this recording a couple of days ago coming off of the Game 1 loss against Oakland. So the energy was much lower. Obviously, this is before the perfect game and the two-game streak streak um the energy was much lower it was terrible vibes and you know things weren't looking great and you know to be honest I still don't think too highly of this team but um it's crazy how things can change drastically in this span of two games um so when we did these uh progress reports you know it was it was in a much more negative light than if I were to do them now, I'd probably bump up a few more grades. But that's just a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, but let's head right into the series. Let's not waste time. The Yankees did lose the first game of this series against the Oakland A's on Wednesday, 2-1. to one. It was Johnny Brito getting called back um, to go up against Blackburn on the bottom of the first. You got the Jose Trevino pickoff at first base. That was a nice play. Bottom of the third, you get the inevitable Tyler Wade triple, and he ends up scoring. It's one nothing Oakland. Um, of course, Tyler Wade hits a triple. Um, actually, in that inning, uh, Jose Trevino ends up throwing another runner out, this one at third base, when Ruiz tries to steal with two outs. Um, this ended the inning, and then top of the fourth comes, and that kind of started the Yankees. Um, started them up a bit. Well, you, you thought it did because you had the one out double by Rizzo, but he was stranded. Um, then Brito gives up the home run in the bottom of the fourth inning uh, to clean up hitter Seth Brown. It made it two nothing Oakland, <clears throat> and that's when the Yankees finally got on the board. Um, Donaldson in the top of the fifth hammers a hanging breaking ball for a home run to cut the lead in half or the deficit in half. And then Volpe 
picks up a base hit, um, gets to second. He's stranded. Um, Brito ends up going two outs into the sixth before Ramirez gets the final out. Top of the seventh, Volpe picks up his second hit of the night, but absolutely destroys any momentum when he got caught stealing second base. Um, can't kill him too much. It was the first of his season where he's gotten caught. Um, Canely in for the bottom of the seventh, and he gets a 1-2-3. Top of the eighth, you had a nice chance to tie the game. Um, if Stanton finds it like he has in the last two nights... This moment right here could have been like his uh, valley of the season because he had first and second, two outs for Stanton. You need this win. It's it's Oakland. It was a perfect time for him to join us, right? What does he do? He does not join us. He uh, he rolls over a changeup, chop to third base, and he's out. Um, so if he ends up sustaining what he's been doing lately, I guess you can look at this point as like, the point where Stanton saw it, it was like, right, I need to get my shit together. Um, top of the ninth comes, you get the Torres leadoff single, then the Volpe single with two outs for guys on first and second. Um, but Higashioka took the bat, and he goes down on strikes to end the night. Uh, and so the Yankees lose this one 2-1 to one to the Oakland freaking A's. Um, just frustrating. Uh, one run on seven hits, three walks, 11 strikeouts, 0 of 5 in scoring position. Volpe was 3 for 4. Um, did get caught stealing late in the night. Uh, you had the hit from Rizzo. You had a hit from Bowers, Glaber, and Donaldson. Rizzo had a double and two walks. Donaldson the solo bomb. Torres the pinch hit single over Bowers. Pinch hitting for Jake Bowers to get the righty on lefty matchup. Um, also had a walk from DJ LeMayu, but overall offensively, it was a pathetic showing. Um, again, I look at that one spot in the eighth inning where you're waiting for Stanton to finally show up for them and he didn't. Um, so hopefully that was the moment that woke him up a bit and, you know, he continues doing what he has been. Um, but yeah, it was a very unforgivable, unacceptable loss. It was tough to see them perform so badly against an all-time awful pitching staff in Oakland. Um, for the Yankees, though, Johnny Brito wasn't great, but he was okay. Five and two-thirds innings, two runs, four hits, two walks, two strikeouts, one home run, and a loss. Um, yeah, he definitely didn't have his best stuff. Um, got away with a few mistakes. You know, he made mistake pitches to Tyler Wade and Ruiz early on. He hung a curveball to Seth Brown, which he got beat on. Um, was also helped out a couple times, again, by Jose Trevino in his arm. But, you know, it still should have been plenty enough against this terrible Oakland A's team. Um, I did like seeing the shutdown inning from Brito in the bottom of the fifth after the Donaldson home run in the top of the fifth. Brito goes back out there and he shuts it down. Um, so I was keeping my eye on that to see how he'd respond, and he did well. Um, I liked how the changeup looked, especially early on in counts he went to it. Um, that was his pitch on Wednesday night. And then Boone let him go back out there for the six, which that's fine by me because it's Oakland, and, you know, it's nice to get length from Johnny Brito. He doesn't often give you length. Um... So he goes out for the sixth, records two pretty easy outs, um, but then he lets up a single to bring up Seth Brown again, who took him deep earlier, so that was that for him. Um, so all in all, not great, but certainly definitely should have been enough, I should say, um, for the win. Unfortunately, no. Uh, the bullpen comes in, two and a thirds from them, no runs, two Ks. Ramirez got out of the sixth for Brito. Um... I guess my only question on Aaron Boone in this game was, other than sitting Glaber Torres for no reason, why are you going with Nick Ramirez in a one-run game out of a day off? Yet you had the you know you had the night off on on uh, Monday. This was a Tuesday game, um, but whatever. It's it's you know he was only in there for one batter and, and it worked and he's been pitching well. Um, Tommy Canley was great after that for a full inning plus, and then Peralta did his job in the eighth. Um, 
to strand the base hit that Canley let up, and that was that. Uh, the Yankees lose. Um, but the second game of the series was uh, a lot different, some would say, as the Yankees won this one 11 and nothing. It was Domingo Herman versus J.P. Sears, former Yankee prospect. I mean, shit. We'll do the offense first because obviously we'll talk about Domingo Herman. Um, we'll, we'll go to Domingo a little, a little later, excuse me, in the show when we tip our caps because uh, something tells me he's going to get this one. Um, but yeah, I mean, what's being kind of thrown under the radar in this game was the Yankees dropped 11 runs on 11 hits, five extra base hits, only eight strikeouts, and they were 5 of 17 in scoring position. Um, love the fact that they had four doubles, a homer, and six singles. You know, having a good combination of hits like that is exactly how you get on base and hit for average. Um, they've added 289 in this game with a 294 runners in scoring position average. Um, so I love the fact that they showed some life in this game. Uh, Stanton homers in the fourth inning makes it one nothing. That was much needed. Then the Yankees drop a six-run inning in the fifth. Higashioka doubles. Makes it 2 nothing. Volpe, the bunt single. He later ends up on third base with his speed, of course. Um, but yeah, his single uh, with the bunt makes it 3 nothing. DJ, base hit, puts it at 4-zip. Stanton, another hit, makes it 6. Then IKF singles to put the Yankees up 7-0. Um, and then they they kind of stalled Herman um, by scoring late in the game and just keeping him on his ass. Um, that was kind of frustrating. Uh, Donaldson gets the sack fly of the seventh, and then to make it 9, 10, and 11 nothing, you got the Bader fielder's choice, Donaldson double, and the IKF ground ball to score a run in the ninth. Um, but, yeah, I'm not going to complain about offense because uh, Domingo went back out there to complete the perfect game, no problem, 27 up. 27 down, not a single batter reached first base. That's what you call a perfect game. And again, we will talk about that more specifically after I go through these recaps, I promise. Um, every Yankee in this game had a hit outside of Glaber and Rizzo. Um, they each did walk, however. Two walks from IKF, a walk from Stanton as well. And you had two hits each from Stanton, Bader, and Volpe. Doubles from Bader, Volpe, Higgy, and Donaldson. And RBI from DJ, three from Stanton, two from Donaldson, and IKF, and uh, an RBI from Higgy. Um, and that was the second game of the series. Uh, in the third game of the series, the Yankees won this game, was it 10 to 4? Um, Clark Schmidt going up against Harris uh, in the bottom of the first. Schmidt gives up a few. Um, a few base runners. He had a single and eventually a sack fly makes it one nothing Oakland. Uh, the Yanks did get it back in the top of the second with the IKF homer to tie it. However, bottom of the third, the A's go up three to one when you had the fly ball that Stanton couldn't catch, lets it go off the wall, couldn't get to it, um, and then Perez drives uh he drives one the Bader for a sack fly again. Um it was IKF again though in the fourth inning with a sack fly for the Yankees to come within a run. And then they absolutely went off and exploded in the top of the sixth for an eight run inning this time. Their biggest inning of the season runs wise. Um Donaldson goes deep uh to put the Yankees up four to three. I think they said four hundred and seventy two feet. Glaber picks up an RBI hit. Stanton rips a double to plate two. It was eight to three. Bader up the middle with a base hit. IKF a base hit. Ten to three after six innings. Um, Schmidt goes an out into the sixth inning before the Yankees went to the bullpen, and it was Marinaccio, Ian Hamilton, um, Nick Ramirez, and Albert Abreu who got it done. Marinaccio two thirds of an inning to finish out the sixth. Hamilton returned from the injury and gave you a clean seventh outside of a base hit. His ERA is down to 1.17, by the way. So people, you know, don't forget how great he was before he went on to the uh, the DL. Um, Ramirez 
keeps doing his thing. And to be honest, maybe I got to start giving him some more credit. Uh, I felt the same way toward Hamilton when we got him. Like, why are we using this guy in this spot? So yeah, maybe the, just this bullpen, just these guys just do work. Like, they're really, really good. They find good bullpen arms. You got to credit Cashman for that and, and Matt Blake for working with these guys. Um, and then Abreu, once again, pitched um, a pretty electric inning, two strikeouts in the ninth. Um, I want Abreu to work so badly because I love – that 99 mile an hour two seamer he's got, it's lethal. Um, it moves, and with Abreu, it's all about location and throwing strikes. And he hasn't consistently been able to do that at the major league level yet. But yeah, it was a good series for the Yankees. So we'll talk about a few things when we return from break. Just stay with us. Episode 536. We'll be right back. I'm your host, RJ. Be right back here on BD4. We appreciate you sticking around and listening so far. When you have a chance, be sure to open YouTube to subscribe, like, and comment. And if you're already watching on YouTube, be sure to head over to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review. We appreciate your feedback and are always looking to improve. Now, with that all said, let's get you back to the show. All right. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ. You are listening to episode 536 of BD4. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. Maybe you're watching on YouTube as well. So, um, yeah, man, it, it was it was a good series for, for the bats. Um, hopefully the offense is starting to come alive. Um, maybe it's too early to talk about that because, again, this is the Oakland A's, so you Got to take this series with a grain of salt, as optimistic as you want to be. Um, but, you know, if you want to grasp at straws, it does kind of go back to the Texas series uh, offensively. You had five runs on Sunday against them. Uh, and then you had 11 in game two of this series and then 10 today on Thursday. Um, so five runs or more in three of the Yankees' last four games. So that's good. That's nice to see. Uh, and they did put up a four spot in uh, game one versus Texas. So, you know, th- like I said, man, I, like, I do think, I'll say it again, I think they're very capable of putting up four or five plus runs more often. Um, I don't think this lineup should be as bad as they've been Um for the majority of the time Aaron Judge has been out. Like, they have enough guys. They don't have a lot of guys. But they have enough guys in there to where it shouldn't be a shock to see them go on these offensive outbursts. It really shouldn't. Uh, and it's it's the guys that you want to see hit hitting right now. Stanton, Glaber, and Rizzo. Those are the three guys, right? The big two and a half, I call it, um, that need to carry the, the load while Judge is out. They've been hitting. But you're also seeing production lately from Donaldson after his whole thing. LeMahieu, a little better lately. Volpe, and even IKF. You know, Stanton's waking up. He had five RBIs this series. He has six RBIs in the last four games. More on him in a second. Um, we talked about Rizzo a lot in the last episode, so I'll spare you that. But, you know, how he's come around since that Fenway series not too long ago. Hopefully he's okay. Um, I know that there was... Um, I listened to the third game, so I didn't see it. But I, I think he left the game early. He got hit on the elbow. Um, and, and from what it seems like, he's probably going to miss the next series. Um, they said he's going to miss tomorrow. Um, I would say they're probably just going to have him sit the series. Um, he's day-to-day. I know how the Yankees work. Um, I'm hoping he's okay, though, because we need him for Baltimore. Um, and we really do need him for St. Louis. Just, you know, we're already down judge. But he's been better hitting lately. Um, he seems back. Glaber Torres had two hits today, a couple RBIs. He's kind of been steady for a little bit now, just steadily producing at an adequate rate. Nothing crazy. Um, even Donaldson too, like five RBIs this series, three hits, a couple of home runs, uh, the 470 something footer today. 
listen, if he gives you that more, you'll take it. He's been hitting lately. Um, just like that. Comes off the benching with with a solid series. Um, if He's not going to be a guy who hits for average anymore. Um, but the power... The power is still there. I don't think you can you can deny that the power with Josh Donaldson is still there. Um, it's just can he hit consistently enough? Um, if he's a two twenty hitter, that's not going to do it for me. I need Josh Donaldson to at least come very close to two fifty. You know, at least give me an OPS very close to eight hundred. Um, and I don't know that he can consistently hit enough and get on base enough to do that. But I guess it's a positive sign in, in in this Oakland series that he's contributing a little more positively. Uh, and DJ has been hitting. Uh, he's on base each of his last five games. He has hits in four of his last five. Today he had a hit and two walks. Uh, we're seeing some extra base hits in there, some hard hit, hard hit balls in there, even when he's hitting into outs. He just looks a little bit better. Um but it's kind of funny how those guys, the veterans, plus you know, a few of the other guys, they're they're starting to hit now. And now some of the replacement guys who were carrying the team for a bit may be starting to come back down to earth. Um, you didn't see much of Jake Bowers in this series, but again, he did go one for three on Wednesday. Um, I keep saying Wednesday. Whenever the first game was, Tuesday. Um, McKinney was hitless in, in two games. He was 0 for 5. Uh, IKF is hitting though, you know, he, he's got a 400 batting average in the last five games, uh, with a plate appearance and he's got five RBIs, a pair of walks and he hit a homer this series. No, he had a ball. You know, the homer that he hit today was to a very deep part of the ballpark. Um, five homers on the season last year. He finished with what? Four. So, listen, I'm all for the IKF Redemption Tour, right? The, the, the fan treatment towards him has changed totally. 180. Um, it's funny because the numbers are, are still not very good. The batting average, I think, is significantly worse than last year. And it's just been, it, it's felt much better because it's all about the role you play. That's where the expectation changes. He was the everyday shortstop last year trying to be, you know, Jeter. That's going to get criticism because obviously you got shoes to fill. Um, Because that position's been a revolving door ever since Jeter. But this year, he's not asked to be the shortstop. He's asked to be a super utility guy. Play some outfield. Play some infield. Hey, if you need a pitch, give us a few innings to save our bullpen in a blowout. He's carrying a great attitude. He's doing it all well. So I'm happy for him. Um, I have no problem with ICAP being a part of the team. I um, I still would prefer he not start every day. Um, and he's, I guess he's not. Uh, but, you know, on a fully healthy Yankees team, I, I think his spot belongs on the bench. And I, I mean that in the most respectful way. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's been hitting lately. And, and Anthony Volpe. Let's talk about Anthony Volpe. Uh, because actually... I'm handing Anthony Volpe an award. I'm tipping my cap to Anthony Volpe this series because um, he's been on he's been on one. He's been on a mission for a few weeks now. So Anthony Volpe gets my tip of the cap. Um, yeah, you see the numbers on the screen. Obviously, he was seven for twelve this series. Um, but how about these numbers? Since Volpe tweaked the batting stance and closed off that front foot two weeks ago at City Field, in 14 games since then, he's batting 349 with a 975 OPS. He's hitting the ball the opposite way a lot more. You're seeing him use the whole field. And he's also got a noticeably better approach with two strikes lately. That's something I know I'm noticing. Um, I mean, this series, he only had one strikeout. That's a big difference from Volpe. You know, I, I see with two strikes, he doesn't seem to be pulling off as much and opening up. He's using both hands and his, his head still, he's not swinging out of his shoes. 
and I'm st- you're starting to see the results. The hits, a few bunts in there. He's still stealing bases. He's still hitting for power. Had some doubles. I'm getting a little excited uh, because how could you not? This is the young kid. It's the big prospect. But, like, yeah, I mean, I, what I envision this kid becoming, and I still envision it, is all of those things that I just mentioned. A guy who gets on base, can hit for average, shows you power, has speed. Like, I very much hope that this is the start of something sustainable. Because I don't know that Anthony Volpe's had a 14-game stretch yet this season where he's hit well. I feel like he's, like, flirted with getting hot for, like, three or four games, but it never was sustained. So I I still want to believe there's something in there where he can find his way out of this and, and, and stay above 200 at the very, 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 very least the rest of the way and start hitting consistently. You know, like, I, I very much hope that's the start of something sustainable. I want to believe there is, um, I want to believe Anthony Volpe has arrived. Like, there's somebody there who can batch a 290 in the future, right? 25-plus homers, 25-plus stolen bases. I think that guy is still in there, and I think the rest of the way, maybe we can get that. Hopefully we can get that. Probably, I don't know. I don't want, I don't want to guarantee it, but um, I, I think... I think he's I think he's done with the 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 buck 90 buck 80 hitting I, I would hope um I, he just looks different closing off that front foot that's a big difference that's it's a big difference I mean you see a lot of guys do that um so yeah I mean he's already on pace for 20 something homers and 20 something stall bases so considering he's had a bad year that, that's that's good that's promising itself. Uh, and he's playing okay shortstop. I still think he's the second baseman. The arm strength scares me, but he's been fine at shortstop. He hasn't had any big problems lately. Um, that play, you know, last series with IKF and him, he kind of took some flack from Yankees fans, but I still think that was more IKF. Uh, I'm talking about game one in Seattle. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Anthony Volpe's been great. Um, but... The Yankee that is going to get the most respect for me this series, and I really want to talk about this guy, is um, obviously the gentleman who threw a... Gentleman might not be the best word to describe this scumbag. But um, the man who threw a perfect game in the middle game of this series. We're going to talk about Domingo Herman when we return from break. Stay with us. We'll be right back here on BD4, episode 536. You can also find us on social media. If you'd like, you can follow BD4 on Facebook, and we're at BD4Pod on both Instagram and Twitter. We appreciate you helping us grow more and more every day. Let's get back to it. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and you are listening to episode 536 of BD4. Um, Domingo Herman, I'm tipping my cap to you, sir. You pitched a perfect game. Wow. Nine innings, no runs, nine strikeouts, no walks, no hits, no home runs, no singles, no doubles, no triples, 99 pitches in the win. A perfect game in game two. Domingo Herman pitched a perfect game. Yeah, um, and, the, and the crazy thing is, beneath all of this, everyone's talking about the perfect game. The guy pitched a perfect game and threw, I think, a Maddox. At this, I think a Maddox is under 100 pitches when you pitch a complete game. 99 pitches. 72 of them were strikes, by the way. That's what 73% strike rate. It was nice to see. Like, he was working quick, and he was very effective, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I mean, thank God he was efficient, because if he was, like, the slightest bit inefficient with the pitch count, you already know, perfect game or not, Captain Hook's coming out of that dugout, and he's yanking him. So, thank God for the 99 pitch count. Um, <laughs> he did not get cucked. Uh, but, yeah, he's always been, Domingo has always been a very economical pitcher. So, 
you know, you have to respect that about him. Um, you know, he had some risky moments in this game. I think later in the night, I don't know, the seventh, maybe seventh inning or something, he had a 3-1 count to one of the uh, Oakland hitters, and he threw a curveball, which, you know, curveball is, is, is a pitch that's supposed to be out of the strike zone. Um, you're used to snapping your wrist and getting that thing low out of the zone, away from the hitter. And so you do that with three balls, and, and boom, just like that, the perfect game's gone, which there's a big difference, like... There's a big difference between a perfect game and a no-hitter. The, the perfect game just has that luster to it. Um, and this was... It was kind of a perfect stretch for Domingo Herman to show, like, who can he, who he can be sometimes. Like, he's either... I feel like he's very Michael Pineda-like, where Pineda was either electric, his stuff was clicking, and he had this no-hit stuff working, or he was leaving pitches over the heart of the plate for home runs. And that's who Herman is. Um, I mean, two starts ago, he gives up seven runs on seven hits in two innings versus Boston. How does he rebound? He doesn't. He goes back out there the next week and he allows ten runs in three innings to Seattle. But last night, he spins a perfect game. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, the first perfect game since King Felix in 2012. So, 11 years. Uh, the 24th perfect game in Major League history. I guess 25 if you want to count. You know, the um, Detroit game where Jim Joyce fucked up on... Uh, God, what's the guy's name? Gallardo? Um, probably butchered it there. Uh, but the fourth perfect game in Yankees history. <laughs> so his name is now next to David Wells. Don Larson and David Cohn. Um, yeah, man. In, in like, I saw a stat last night, which pretty funny. Uh, each of those times, the Yankees went on to win the World Series. Um, I'll say they have the staff to do so. Top to bottom, they have the pitching staff, bullpen rotation to definitely do it. Um, other side's a different story. Uh, there are some other things in there we could talk about, but... Positive vibes right now. He had, um, yeah, he had an excellent game. Obviously, he had an excellent game. He had his shit going from the very get-go of this game. That curveball was very crisp. Uh, and if the curveball is working, it's going to be a good night for Domingo Ramon. He, that curve has so much depth to it, the shape of it. It's a good pitch. Uh, he's got long fingers, so he's able to throw it very effectively. Um <clears throat> It's been his best pitch this season. It's been far and away the pitch he throws the most. He uses it 42% of the time, uh, and he has hitters batting 176 on it with a 375 slug. So that's pretty remarkable. Uh, the four-seam fastball is his worst pitch. Doesn't get great velo on it, and so he leaves it up a ton, and that gets hit around. But the curve has been phenomenal. Uh, and so is the changeup in that two-seamer that he throws. Um, hitters are also batting below 200 on those two pitches as well. Um, so just sometimes he gets in trouble with the four-seam fastball, but didn't matter because all he did was go with that curveball um, on um, on Wednesday night. So, yeah, I mean, every every perfect game, you obviously also like to look back at that one play that saved it. Um in this game, Anthony Rizzo going to his left in the fifth inning, which is a play he makes a lot. Um, but that was a nice play, you know, and he doesn't make that play. And, and we're sitting here talking about a solid game from Herman um, instead of a perfect game. Um, and you also had on the final play, I mean, the, it was a routine ground ball to Donaldson, right? But it was hard off the bat. And, and so the second it was hit, I'm like, oh, this is this is the base hit to left field. But they pan the camera to Donaldson. He, he, he fields it. He throws the first, and it's an easy ground ball, 5-3 five, uh, five, out. So, yeah, I'm just thinking, if I was in the field during a perfect game, like, I'd have a heart attack. Before the ball even got to me, If I'm, I, I would, like, I can't imagine the anxiety that's going through you when you're playing defense, especially at the hot corner <laughs> against a right-handed, heavy-hitting team. <laughs> Damn, man. Um, so, yeah, he made the last out, Donaldson. And uh, Rizzo with the put out at first base. Uh, 
And credit to, obviously, Domingo, but also Kyle Higashioka for calling a good game. That's his second no-hitter that he's caught. Um, so, yeah, the catcher plays a big role there, too. Uh, but this this was unbelievable. You know, we we all witnessed the uh, Corey Kluber no-hitter. Um, but, uh, again, like I said, a no-hitter is just, it's so much less than a perfect game. There's just not the same shine on it. A perfect game is golden, man. It's golden. It's it's just one. It's one in itself. It's its own entity. It's a perfect game, a big gap, a no-hitter, a big gap, shutout, a big gap, and then everything. Like, there, there, there's a huge difference. Um, I, I was... I was... I went to a game at Yankee Stadium once. It was a home opener. And uh, Michael Pinedo was on the mound. My dad and I went. We were behind home plate, and I saw I, I saw Michael I saw Michael Pineda, and I think that was a night. That was a it was a day game. It was um, yeah, it was a home opening. He was flirting with it. I th- I want to say he was in the sixth or maybe the seventh, and I think he was pitching a perfect game. And then he finally lost it. Um, so that's the the closest I've come to. Seeing a perfect game live, uh, but I was home for for this Domingo game. I was, it was obviously it was in, it was in Oakland and West Coast trips are, are you know they go late, but I stayed up for every minute of it. And you know, I didn't even put it together that it was happening until maybe the fifth inning. And at that point, I was you know once I realized, I stopped texting all my people and I just let it roll. Like I was just watching the TV. Um, of course, you know. Ruko and all these baseball reporters and, and, and these losers on the internet have to try and be cool with the whole, hey, look, he's perfect, which I still say to this day, people do that just to try to prove a point, and it's so annoying. Just let people have their fun. Like, we got to stop taking it that serious. And, um, you know, people trying to disprove the jinx. But, no, I mean, Ruko and Nelson did a good job on the call. Um, but I realize it in like the fifth inning and I'm like, Oh shit. So I stopped texting everybody. I don't want to jinx it. And I stayed in the same seat right here that I'm sitting in right now. I keep my tablet open positioned exactly where it was. It was slightly slanted, leave my phone down face down the desk as it was for the last couple innings. And I didn't want to get anything out of rhythm and just keep everything how it was. So yeah, you're welcome by the way. So, you know, I, I countered all those morons trying to, prove their little point and jinx it and because of me Domingo Herman threw a perfect game um and I don't I don't care you're obviously seeing this I don't care that it's Oakland um a perfect game is a perfect game it does not change one thing you try going out there in the big leagues and throwing one let me know how that works um so you know whenever people criticize things like that I always like to bring up like if Domingo Herman went out there and tossed six innings of two-run ball, nobody would be criticizing him. Not a single soul. But we want to do it because he throws a perfect game. It's just weird. Um, it's nuts. So, congrats to him, man. That is awesome. He's going to be signing autographs along with Kyle Higashioka for the rest of their lives. They are a part of baseball history. Um, I mean, baseball's been around forever. That was just the 24th. It's crazy to think about. Perfect game is never going to lose its luster. You know, it's never going to be something people... It's, it's one of the coolest things in sports. Baseball is such a difficult sport, man. And to sustain success like that, every single batter 27 times in a row, that is really difficult to do. Now, I want to see what he does his next time out. That's always my favorite part. How do you, how do you keep that going? Do you keep it going? Or do you get lit up? Because Kluber threw the no hitter against Texas, and I think the next start he wasn't as great, and he also got injured, and that was kind of it for his Yankees career. Um, but Domingo Herman, let's see what happens. He gave up seven. You give up ten. You throw a perfect game. What's next? So, congrats to Domingo Herman for uh, for throwing a perfect game. Let's talk Tommy Cannon. 
Tommy Canely, I'm giving him uh, my respect. I'm tipping my cap to Tommy Canely. Uh, not much to say. Just keep doing your thing. He pitched an inning in this series. One hit. That's it. No runs. Um, pitched in another tight spot this series on the on the Tuesday night game in the one-run loss. And, but he did his job. Um, I guess you can count it as one-plus innings because he did give up the hit when he went back out in the eighth. But, yeah, he now has... Four cap tips on the year, which is really impressive given he just started pitching for the Yankees a couple weeks ago, right? This was, he's got, what, not even 10 or 11 appearances under his belt? Let's see. Yeah, 11 games on the season. A zero year right knock on wood, 10 and two-thirds innings. How about the four hits and one walks in those innings? That's awesome. Knock on wood. Um, So Tommy Canley gets my tip of the cap for pitching a very good game on the 27th of June, which was Tuesday night. Um, yeah. Um, you know what? Speaking of the bullpen, we always go over this, go over this now. We haven't done one of these in a while, so let's do a little bit of a bullpen trust tree. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah. The guys that I trust right now in a high leverage spot, I'm going to list them one, two, eight, or nine, whatever, however many guys we have. Um, I'm not going to include Hamilton because he just got back, so I, I got to see how he looks. But right now, if we're talking about today, who I trust most at this very moment, June 30th, it's past midnight as I speak, Friday, June 30th, 2023, I got to go Canely as my first guy. I'll go Canely. Holmes, King, Peralta, Marnaccio, uh, Cordero, Abreu Ramirez, or Ramirez Abreu, Abreu Ramirez, don't really think it matters. Yeah, right now, I mean, Canley's been phenomenal. Uh, Holmes has been phenomenal since he, you know, stopped becoming the full-time closer and, and just got that flex role. Uh, Michael King and Peralta have struggled of late, which is why they're three and four, but they're still very good pitchers. Uh, Marinaccio has has been well. He's been fine. So, yeah, uh, I I got Canely, Holmes, King, Peralta, Marinaccio, Cordero, Abreu, Ramirez in that order. Um, Again, Hamilton will work himself back up there, I'm sure, at some point. Um, He's back now, so that's going to be good. Um, When we return, I do want us to, uh, to, to talk about a certain player um, and uh, that player is going to be Giancarlo Stanton. I have some um, a conversation that people have talked about a lot before with him, uh, and I want to talk about Stanton and a specific situation when we return from break. Stay with us. We'll be right back here on the show, episode 536 of BD4. Be right there. If you have time in the day or maybe just prefer old-fashioned reading over listening, then you can always follow along and subscribe to BD4 Blog, by going to bd4blog.com. We're not on there as often, but when we do post, it's just as entertaining, opinionated, and passionate as we are on this podcast. Thank you so much. And let's keep on with the show. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. You are listening to episode 536 of the podcast. Giancarlo Stanton needs to play more outfield. Um... If there's one thing we need to do, it's for Giancarlo Stanton to press Boone and have him get him in the outfield a lot more often. Because we're starting to see him hit now that he's playing some outfield. I still need to see more, uh, but I'm hoping to God that I talk too soon about Stanton being at his end. You know, probably a little premature, maybe a little premature, but I'm hoping it was. Um, He needs to play more. I know he can't move well. But I'm not saying every single night, you know, but in Yankee Stadium right field, let him play that. It's a small right field. Maybe stay away from big old, bigger ballparks. Um, obviously, with, with Oakland, the Coliseum, that's big, but you can get away with it because Oakland is abysmal. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, maybe four times a week or so. Try and get him off his feet, get the blood flowing, get him moving, active in the game. Instead of sitting on the bench, out of the, you know your your mind is in a different spot. I know how the bench works in baseball. I, I've I'm a pitcher. 
Um, I was. Get him up and active, man. Because statistically, that has worked very well with Stanton. Um, he statistically is a better hitter when he's in the outfield than when he just DHs. Uh, in fact, I went into the numbers and did a little digging. And in the last five years, Stanton as a DH bats 228. In the last five years, Stanton as an outfielder bats 290. That's like, whoa, numbers right there. That is no small sample. Five years, and he bats 62 points higher when they let him play the outfield as opposed as opposed to getting off your ass just four times a night. So let the guy play, man. I really, I'm a firm believer in that, that the blood gets flowing and you have him in a rhythm more. He's more comfortable. He feels good. I think there's something to that. I know some things can be coincidence, but I don't think that's one. Let Stanton play some outfield. And I know, again, doesn't move great. I'm not saying you play him there every night. But play him there a little more than you you have been over these last few seasons. Let the guy play a little more, and maybe he'll adjust. Maybe he'll start, you know, playing more of an adequate outfield. But <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up because I've noticed that once again they play him in the outfield a couple of times, and he and he gives them some results. Um. So, yeah, you're looking at a third consecutive series win, and, and you know, are the Yankees back? Um, has my outlook on this team changed? Well, okay, so they took two of three from Seattle. That's a very mediocre team. Then they took two of three from Texas. That's arguably the best team in baseball right now. And they just took two of three from Oakland, the worst team in baseball. So it's hard to take, um, it's hard to take that and do anything with it. Uh, we'll see how they do in these three games against St. Louis, which I think they should take. But again, I, I've as far as short term goals go, you know, getting into second place because I kind of give it up on the division. I've never said this team is done, um, and and so as far as the summer goes, short term regular season, I remain with the same opinion that I've been beating you over the head with. And if you've been listening to the show, I, I've been constantly saying that I still think it's very possible that this Yankees team wins 94, 95 games and takes second place. I still think that's very possible. Um, I mean, right now, considering all the shit, they're on pace to win 90 games. So if they stay hot and they keep getting guys back, you know, Hamilton today, who has been a huge asset to the bullpen. Rodon, Rodone, coming back next week, who, if healthy, is a fucking ace, by the way. I mean, let's not overstate that. Let's not forget, Carlos Rodon is an ace pitcher. So, I know you know, people are saying, we need hitting, we need hitting, not pitching. I know that, but I'm not going to sit here and act like Carlos Rodon is some nobody who's not going to affect the team. Like, this team's pitching is World Series caliber pitching. I'll give them that. Their bullpen is so phenomenal, so fantastic, that the Yankees pitching overall their ERA in the season, combining their number one bullpen ERA and number one uh, and number 15 rotation ERA, still has their total pitching at number one in ERA. <laughs> like, that's pretty nuts. So adding Rodone next to Garrett Cole and Severino... And if you keep getting solid pitching from Domingo Herman and Clark Schmidt until Cortez comes back, you're good there too, man. Like, you're very good. That's a, like I said before the season, it's a rotation that has potential to be top notch in baseball. So, if we're healthy and if's a big word, if Rodon comes back and everything's good to go and Sevy stays healthy, it's a good ass rotation. So. Yeah, I don't think I have a problem with this team in the regular season. I, I think they're good. Now, if we're talking playoff success longer term, 
and even down the line this regular season to make sure nothing goes wrong, I still think we should probably get some bats here, right? Because I'm not optimistic as of today in the New York Yankees being a World Series contender. So I still need to see more for that. You got to have a big trade deadline. Jump on the big fish. There always seems to be one big fish. I know nothing is, is happening right now. The market's been quiet. But you know how this shit works. August 1st comes and boom, there are going to be surprise sellers. You're already hearing noise about the Padres, St. Louis. You're hearing some Otani rumors. Like, we'll see. You never know. Guys become available. Doesn't have to be a superstar, but, it, it, you know, if there's a, an all-star caliber player out there, Yankees need to jump. The Yankees really need to jump because they need bats. They need a left fielder. They probably need a third baseman. Um, And obviously, a lot depends on the health of Aaron Judge. If he's good to go in August... That's humongous. If it's a lot longer than that or worse, then no. You know, the chances that this team wins in the playoffs is fucked. You know, they could be fucked. Uh, bearing, again, bearing a, a Juan Soto fantasy deal with Tani. You know, but, yeah, it's it's just the lineup with me, man. That's it. Like, I know they're very streaky. But even this season, they have not put up good offensive numbers. They're bottom third in runs. They're bottom third in OPS. Their average is last place if not bottom three or something like they're very bad um it's very uncharacteristic though to see that you know i always thought they'd always mash in the regular season as long as time ticks um so hopefully what we've been getting lately is is something that becomes more consistent uh, because i again i do think this offense has Enough to get by in the regular season. I think there's 94, 95 wins in there. There's second place. I think that's very possible still. Um, I just, I need a big trade deadline. And I need a healthy Aaron Judge for me to really start talking about playoff success. But as far as the regular season goes, nobody should be giving up on second place. Um, you give up on first place, I get that. I have. I have. The, div- the division's over. But... I'm I'm like you know I don't like to jump too far ahead. So as far as winning today, winning tomorrow, keeping a a good pace, I still think the Yankees could be a good team. Um, take that as you may, but yeah. So with that all said, um, I, I think that's all we have for the first part of this episode. Now the last thirty minutes of the show here, we're going to pan to the interview, or uh, it's not an interview, to the conversation that Greg from Yankee Crazy Podcast and I had where we handed out progress reports on the New York Yankees. Now, again, I'll say it one last time. I hope you're listening to this so I don't get killed in the comments section. When we did these grades and handed out the progress reports, this was coming off of that 2-1 loss to Oakland on Tuesday. So the vibes were much different. All right, so if I could go back and and upgrade some of these grades, I probably would a few. Um, But yeah, things were not good at all. Two days ago. And still to this day, I don't think things are great. But um, some of those grades are going to sound extra harsh now that we're listening to this when the Yankees are uh, kind of on a better note. So just keep that in mind. Um, That's it. So we'll head to our final break here. We'll get back. We'll wrap it up with our trivia. And then we'll head to the conversation that Greg and I had for the second half of the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back here on BD4. Studio 69 Productions is a production company that allows content creators of all genres to market their podcast or whatever project they're working on. It's an online platform that will promote your content no problem. All you have to do is get in touch with film director and podcast producer Leo Rodriguez from Say No More Podcast, and you're good to go. You can find him on Instagram at Studio69NJ, Studio 69 Productions, where dreams are heard and born. All right, welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. Let's wrap this up with our trivia question of the day. All right. So, for this episode, episode 536 of the podcast, our trivia question. On this day in 2016, which 
former Yankee hit a walk-off home run against the Texas Rangers. On this day, June 29th, 2023, back in 2016, which former Yankee hit a walk-off home run against the Texas Rangers? I hope I got the date right. If not, it's only a couple days prior to today, but yeah. On this day in 2016, which former Yankee hit a walk-off home run against the Texas Rangers? So let me know the answer wherever you can reach me. If you get the answer correct, I'll give you a shout-out in the next episode. Guys, with that all said, we're going to head to the second half, or more like the final third of the show here, where Greg and I go over the Yankee season and hand out progress reports. So I hope you enjoyed this part of the show, and I hope you enjoy the second part of the show. Let's get to it. And then you dropped, you dropped that game in Oakland last night. <laughs> you scored one run off of a Josh Donaldson home run. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? What, what's going on? And, you know, after that series with Texas and Seattle, I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, maybe we do have some hope. And there could be. But I'm at the point now after what happened last night to be like, it's going to be the same old thing. Oh, you know, it's going to be the same old thing come playoff time and they're going to get bounced and you just need to restart, you know, and, and I understand yeah. second half, a lot of things can happen. So see what happens up until the break or yeah. Uh, yeah well, yeah, the all-star break, because then you still have what two weeks after that until the trade deadline. And right. You got it. You got to make a big decision. You can't just be like, "Oh, let's go get a a, a left fielder." You got to really retool this team, in my opinion, if you're going to be a legitimate playoff contender um, or World Series contender. They, you know, they might squeak into the playoffs like this, but it's just it's it's same old, same old, and it's annoying. You know, it's yeah, it's really frustrating because like we all knew this, like. The second half of last year was very, very underwhelming. Um, And then we get swept by Houston in the playoffs. And we don't really, like, the reason we got swept was the bats went cold. And we go into the offseason. Yeah, we we brought back Rizzo. We brought back Judge, obviously. We didn't improve to that roster. We didn't improve that lineup. So you're seeing now the effects of that. Um, and you know, the, the, the unfortunate part is obviously Cashman had plenty of names to go after there, were, there were left fielders out there. I wanted the guy in yeah. Boston right now. Yeah. Um, you know, even yeah. the, the guy who won the batting title, uh, Roja, uh, Arias, uh, yeah. he won the batting title, Minnesota opened him for trade. And I didn't hear a thing about the Yankees being interested. And I certainly think they could have put something together and yeah. you know, Lord knows the guy sitting 400, he would have helped over here. Um, but yeah, it, it just, dude, it seems like the same thing. And, you know, maybe they get hot. Maybe they end up finding a way, scratching and clawing to win 93 games and take second place in the division. But at the end of the day, it's like, we know where this is going to end up in October. We know what's going to happen. Um, but right now, like we're far from a second place. If we're in third place, a half a game out of fourth place. So Technically, we lose another game. Toronto finds a win somewhere. We're all of a sudden, you know, out of the playoffs if it started tomorrow. So we got to figure out a way to to, to get this together. Guys got to step up. I'm looking at guys on big contracts like Stanton. The veterans like him and Rizzo have to step up. Um, I don't have a ton of hope for guys like Donaldson. Uh, The Mayhew, I've been down on him the last couple of years. He seems like he's starting to decline big time. Um, So it's really, to me, it has to come from guys like Rizzo and and, and Stanton and, and maybe even Torres a little bit has to help because yeah. those are the three guys who you expect something from at this point. Right. Right. And it's, it's, it's just so crazy how judge goes down and the offense just is gone. And yeah, you know, there's, there's guys on there who can, who can do the job. You know, you look at it and you know, 
it's it's not the greatest roster compared to other no. teams, but there's some solidness to it. And you get guys like Bowers and McKinney who are actually performing better than anticipated. And they're they're actually they're actually two of the better players on yeah. this team. And like you yeah. said, Stanton, Rizzo. You know, you expect that, you know, this was supposed to be a bounce back year for DJ. Um, you know, uh, it's it's just and, and Glaber, you know, those are some big guys who need to be helping to carry this team. And Bader. Bader has actually given them some some good stuff this year, um, giving them some life. But it's it's everybody goes cold all at once. It's you know, it's, it's crazy. yeah, I dude. And like you said, it's like it shouldn't be this bad. Like, I know we're not – Judge is a big deal and everything, but, like, we shouldn't be the Oakland A's without Aaron Judge. Like, yeah. you have a lot of, you know, lower-class guys in there, but the, the couple of guys you do have have the ability to put four or five runs up on the board, and they're just not doing that. Um, right. I mean, if this pitching staff – imagine if this pitching staff wasn't doing what they were doing right now. I mean, we would be like, in last place. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's crazy. So I want to I want to go real briefly and um do a little bit of like uh like a progress report. We'll go around yeah. the diamond and if you want to go like we'll start at first base with Rizzo and we'll give each player a grade from A to F um and, and you know base it on base it on their own expectation. Um uh, if you want to do that, you go and I go and we'll take yeah. turns like that. Yeah, let's go. Let's start at first with yeah. Rizzo and you know, he has been Overall, I would say solid. You know, he had that after that neck injury, you know, into the worst slump of his career. Uh, then he's bounced back a little bit. So he's putting up the numbers um, that he should be. You know, he's he's kind of at where he should be, I think. So for Rizzo, you know, we got to include his defense in there and yep. his uh, the intangibles like clubhouse guy and team leader. I'm going to give him... I, I would, I would, I didn't give him a little hot. I was going to say B, but let's give him a B plus because I, I really do like Rizzo. And maybe, maybe that's a little bit high. Um, I haven't really checked his stats, but I'm going to go overall B plus for him. That is, that is exactly what I have written down for him. So I like that. This is going to be fun. I want to see how, how, how similar and different these, these are, <laughs> but I have B plus as well. I, I, for the same reason he's playing, he's a good veteran. First of all, he's a great voice for that clubhouse. Um, I feel like yeah. they need a leader in there, and he's the guy. Um, I the defense, the the left handed hitting, the power. He's been good. He had a terrible slump, you know, for a few weeks there. Um, maybe it was a neck injury, or whatever. But he seems to be coming right. around now. Um, so he's he's been good. He's been solid all year. So I gave him a B plus as well. Um, we'll go second base. So this is this is gonna be an interesting one. We'll go to Glaber Torres. I, I want you to start with that. Oh, Glaber, uh, his new nickname, which I want to get trending on twitter when he makes yeah. those those dumbass uh moves goofy glaber i call him <laughs> yeah with these you know just mental errors and you know I, he's a, he's frustrating he's a frustrating guy because as soon as you say oh he's putting it together he's doing really well he'll do some dumb mistake or you know, he starts trying to do too much with the bat and swinging out of his shoes instead of trying to make contact. Um, so really frustrating. Overall, I just, I hate mental errors. You know, the the, no. the classic coaching thing. Physical errors are one thing, but mental errors are just not acceptable. And he's yeah. had too many mental errors this year. You know, I know people will go and say, look at second baseman across the league and his, he's, above average compared to a lot. At least that was some stats I saw last year. Uh, I just still think his mental errors um, are bad for the team, you know, and, and little things add up. And, you know, it's one or two things here that can be difference makers uh, winning and losing a game. So I'm uh, really disappointed with him this year. Uh, I would say, hmm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be nice <laughs> to him. I'm, I'm gonna try to be nice to everybody if I can. I would say I, I don't want to give him a C, but I'm gonna say B minus. 
for him. That, that is the, exactly what I had as oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think Glaber is a losing player, um, but I, I can't ignore that he's been making more contact this year and he's doing better with his situational hitting, which are two aspects of the game that the Yankees yeah. very much need. So I did give him that. But, you know, the defense, the the base running mistakes, just the mental lapses like that are really a pain in the ass. Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, even with his – bat he's only he's like a 250 hitter so he's not that terrible not that good um so i, I think b plus uh, b minus is fair um shortstop this 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 will be cool uh anthony volpe has been <laughs> he's he's been a popular name this season um <laughs> wh- where do you go with him oh let's see volpe i i i like him i like the move when they made him the starter and like we had discussed you got to give him some time. He always adjusts at each level and puts it together at what he's been doing in the minors. Obviously the major is much bigger step. And, you know, I, I think lately since he changed, you know, the, uh, the, the, the That's chicken right. farm change your stance <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> week that he had, uh, he has been looking better at the plate to me. Uh, his stats are still a little bit low. I don't know where he is with home runs, but he was, um, where is he at? He might, he might have 10 home ten. runs. At He's got 10, point. 10 homers, 15 so, stolen bases. You know, not bad, solid. And if he can, you know, let's say he puts up, you know, and we're not even at the halfway point. So uh, he could finish with 25 homers. Um, maybe more if he really starts to turn it on. I like him. I don't love his defense at times. It looks like the eventual shift to second base is going to happen at some point. You know, it's similar to Glaber when Glaber played short, that that disaster of a year where they had him in shortstop. It's just, he's not as fluid as you want a shortstop to be. He's been making the plays and I know his stats are um, above average for the league. So that is, you know, you want to look at stats, that's great. You want to look at the eye test, the, the infamous eye test. Yeah. I think that's where I say move him over to second. So to give him a grade, uh, I think there was a lot of hype with him. So we expected like an A from him this yeah, season, yeah. but, you know, he's got growing pains. I'm going to say – I'm going to give him a – it's either B minus or B. I'm gonna go with. I'm a little disappointed with him, so I'm gonna say B minus for right, him. I like that. Um, but, but I make me feel like shit because I got a C minus. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be positive. No, you know what? You got a point, but like, I um, he has been hitting lately, which is good. I just it's you know I know he's a rookie and and that's you got to take that into account. Um, but he is out there every day and. 190, whether you look at it, you know, if he's a rookie or not, is, is 190. It's hurting the yeah, team a lot. True. Um, there's been stretches where his at-bats have been very uncompetitive. The high fastball still gives him trouble. I wish he would try to level out his swing, and there's a bit of an uppercut to it. Um, mm. The defense, like you said, has been average to above average. Um, it's the arm strength that concerns me at shortstop. Um, but, yeah, he's shown some power. He's shown an ability to draw the walk. Um, obviously he's got speed. He could steal bases and he distracts pitchers and forces them to make mistakes when he's out there. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just, I need to see some more. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely a good sign that he's starting to come around, uh, last couple of weeks or so. Um, Hey, here's one Josh Donaldson at third base. My favorite, my favorite Josh. Oh man. He, he has just been, Pretty much a disappointment from, I would say day two because didn't he didn't he yep. start opening day with a walk off last year or was that maybe yeah the against I Boston? Remember, but he was early on he had uh, that walk off, and after that it's kind of been ugh, it's, he's he's been disappointing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we when it first that deal happened and everybody was you know at least <laughs> many people were stoked, including myself, to get rid of Gary Sanchez. And then bring him over for this, you know, toughness that he was supposed to bring. Big disappointment last year. Injured this year. Um, you know, 
uh, <laughs> the only offense last night, which is really funny. Um, I just, I, I think they got to get rid of him. So I would say, uh, you know, I, I won't give him an F, <laughs> even though I want to, but I'm going to say D. He's just, yeah. I think he's done. I think his career is really done. I don't see him moving on to another team and, and all of a sudden finding it. So I got to give him a D. Yeah, I also went D. Um, I think, you know, the defense maybe is his calling card right now. He's playing yeah, some good defense. That's and- true. He does have seven home runs, but like you can't be batting 125. Um, So you're getting a D. Um, What about LeMayhew? Oh, DJ. I love DJ and I'm, I'm disappointed with him this year. Uh, You know, he looked, you know, he had his moments and, you know, a few games in a row where he looks really good. And then he just looks really bad. Supposedly working on his mechanics over the past, uh, I don't know, week and a half or something. I don't know when I read that one. Um, Drove the ball, what was that, Sunday against Texas for that double, uh, which looked good. And that's DJ when he's he's on, you know, he's hitting that ball uh, opposite way, driving it into that gap between center and right. Um, Always good defense from him. Uh, he had a really nice play over the, I think it was over the weekend. Um, so he still got that when he was playing third. Uh, but, you know, he's just not, he's, he's, he's in decline, which is, uh, you know, he's 34 at this point. So it, it makes sense. But to give him a grade, I got to say, uh, man, I think I'm going to give him a, B minus two because I don't want to give him a C. I don't. I, I think he. I think he brings enough where he can be in that that B minus range. <laughs> I gave. <laughs> I gave him a D, man. What the fuck? D? Oh, wow. I'm being way too positive. I, I think he's been shit. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, he's played some versatile defense. I'll give him that. But I mean, yeah. he's gotten two twenty. I can't. I can't. I can't go higher than this. But I. Uh, whatever. Um. Damn. I, but I would see. I would, I gave Donaldson a D, so I wouldn't give DJ yeah. in the same category. That, yeah, you know that makes sense. That's Donaldson. a good point. Um, That's a good point. Yeah. Every all um, you know with him and who else? I was on Volpe. I was going to do C's, and I'm like, I don't know. C C and B seems so much. There yeah. seems like so much distance between the two. But um, yeah. it could be. You got. You know. You bring up a good point. He, yeah. he really has been a disappointment, and you know. He used to be our leadoff hitter, and look at him now. He's he's all over the place, and you know, back in the order at fifth. And although what he, he let off last night, he just looks slower. Like at bat speed, yeah. his foot speed. I don't know. Um, Stanton, Stanton. Now there's a guy who uh, another big disappointment this year. And you know, like me and you always talk about it. Come playoff time, playoff Stanton has been great. Regular season Stanton. Not so great. Um, he did have that hit too on on Sunday. It was a Sunday when they came back to to win That's that game. Yeah, a uh, big hit there. But you know the guy is hobbling around. Can't play the outfield anymore. Um, you know, so you expect if he's going to DH, you want production from him there, and it's not happening. Um, you know, I don't know how many games he's played since coming off the IL, but. Just, just disappointment, and it's only going to get worse with over yeah. what is it like three more seasons? He's we got him for, um, you know him. I think I'm going to give him a D too. Um, I, I can't be nice. I can't be. <laughs> I can't be positive with him. I'm really no. just. I, I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, I, I gave him an F, man. <laughs> I mean, he's the guy making 28 million a year, whatever it is. Judge goes down. You're supposed to step in and be the guy. Yeah. Uh, last night he had a huge opportunity to do something in the eighth inning, first and second. He rolls over, change up, chopper to third base. Yeah. He's out. And how many times yeah. have we seen that this year? Soft contact strikeouts. The fear factor doesn't seem to be there. He can't hit. He can't run. He can't play the field. I don't know. I, I think like I was mentioning to you a few times, he might be finished. Um, it does not look good. I know he's a streaky player. I know he takes time sometimes when he comes back from the injury list to find a rhythm, but this one seems a little bit different. I don't know. Um, I give him an F. Maybe I'm just pissed off, but yeah, no, he's nothing good. Um, uh, how about Jake Bowers? This this should be a fun one. 
Jake Bowers, you know, like I mentioned him earlier, playing much better than anticipated, although he was doing really well in AAA. And that's when a lot of the hype started saying, you know, bring him up, bring him up. And I like him. He's, you know, he's shown some power. He it has shown to be decent in the field, even though he is a first baseman by by trade or whatever you want to call it. Um I don't even know where he is with um, his stats, but just from watching games and seeing him play, I like him and I got to give him, I would, I would say give him a B plus. I like that. I gave him a B minus just, you know, he's been, he's been good. He's been productive. He's producing runs, extra base hits, doubles, home runs. Yeah. Uh, he puts up good at bats. I like that about him. He's always, it seems like the count is always deep when he's up at the plate. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, the only thing that scares me about him is like you said, he's a first baseman playing outfield. So sometimes he goes after balls a little differently, but, um, yeah, he's been fine. Yeah. I, I like, I like Jake Bowers. I yeah. Get I get, like I said, I guess I'm higher on him just because I didn't expect much. I thought he was going to be one of these guys who came up and is like, eh, you know, we also have to remember I'm, I'm naturally pessimistic. So there's <laughs> that factor. Um, what about Harrison Bader? Oh, Harrison Bader, another one who I really like him. Defense, obviously, love him out there in center field. Um, hitting, you know, came back, was was hitting the ball really well. Um, then he had that other IL stint uh, yeah. and now came back and is – he's playing all right. He's playing decent. Um, so – Grade wise for him, I you know I don't like this whole thing where they where Boone has come out to say that he's given him uh, yeah. more days off. Um, yeah. You know that game in what was it? I can't. Was it maybe Seattle where IKF uh, ba- um, Bader had just come back and IKF was playing center, dropped that ball. IKF that might have been the stolen base game where IKF yeah, just too the base yeah. even though he was called safe and. Um, I, I was so I was so annoyed that Bader wasn't in that game. And, you know, for a guy who's going to be your starting center fielder at age, he's like only 28, I think. And to say that you got to give him more rest days for the, the injury history, I don't like that. But if we're basing this solely on performance, um, it's tricky because he was good, but now he's cooled off. Good defense. Uh I don't know. Overall, same thing. And like the, the B minus area, all those guys who I'm like, I don't want to give C's and I'm, <laughs> I'm putting them up a little bit higher. Uh, I'll go B minus with him. Yeah. I also want B minus. Um, I think he's been good. He's, he's, you know, some extra base hit power at the plate um, provides a jolt sometimes. And um, obviously he's a great center fielder. Um, just got to stay in the field. You know, they, they say the best availability is uh, whatever the hell that's that saying is. What is it? The best, the best ability is availability. That's it. Um, oh, that's good. I don't know if I've heard that one. That's a good yeah. One. It's, so I give him a B minus. He's been fun. Uh, Billy McKinney. What do you think about Billy McKinney? Uh, Billy McKinney, man, he has yeah. been. Uh, I don't know. Uh, for compared to everyone else on this team, he's he's like one of the best players. Yeah. Uh, which is another unexpected uh guy. Um, it's great to see him up and having success. And I feel like he's in that same range with Bowers in terms of he came up, didn't really expect much from him. You you know, you're obviously anybody comes up, you have some high hopes, but I was like, Oh, well, you know, we'll see uh, what he can do. And he's been better than anticipated. So I got to give him, see if I gave Bowers, what I give Bowers a B plus, I, I got to go higher for McKinney and I got to say a minus for him and again i think it might be a little bit high <laughs> uh but i i like what he's done so no that's fair i think that's very fair um yeah no i agree with you i gave him a b plus um just because i'm not handing out a's here all right this is it's i'm not handing out a's to a third place team greg <laughs> no no but no I, I think he's been very good i agree i gave him a b plus because he's i think um up until this series he's gotten on base in every game but two I heard. So that's awesome. Um, hmm. Lefty, he's got a nice swing and he's, you know, I, I think he's been pretty good in the outfield. So 
And like I mentioned to you, it's pretty funny how Judge goes down, the offense can't hit, but like the guy filling in for Aaron Judge is the only one hitting. So yeah, exactly. that was funny. Um, yeah, I gave him a B plus. Uh, and then we'll we'll wrap it up with the two catchers. Then we'll go over the rotation as a whole and the bullpen, and then we'll grade the team as a whole. So uh, the two catchers here. How about Jose Trevino? Uh, you know, I think both of those guys are great uh, managers of the pitching staff. And it's shown between the bullpen and the starters that, you know, it's, it's been a solid season for Yankees pitching. Uh, So I like both of those guys defensively. Uh, Offensively, I haven't even seen their latest stats, but they don't give you much. Higgy here and there can, can have a good game. Trevino I've been actually really disappointed with because, you know, last year he had so many clutch hits Yeah, and I just, when he would come up in a big spot this year, I'd say, oh, he's going to get it done. He's going to get a hit right here. He's clutch, and he hasn't been coming through, especially, man, what was that at bat? Was it against the Red Sox where he looked so lost at the plate, swinging all over the place? And I'm like, what the hell is he doing? This isn't the the two, the 2022 Jose Trevino. So disappointed with both of them. Uh, I think Higgy's time is over. Uh, for the Yankees, I think, you know, past this year, I, I don't want to see Higgy in 2024. He's, he's no. been, he's been what he's been. Um, mm-hmm. And he has given us some good years of service, but nothing fantastic. Trevino's got to step it up. He is, um, you know, he's, he's been a disappointment from last year in, in my eyes. Um and but hologram Ben, who's real, that we've just covered. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather see him in there, which is is really surprising. Uh, but I think I think they have a lot of loyalty to Higgy. So yeah. for both of them, I would pr- probably lump the two of them with the same grade, and that would be, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe C plus, just because. I know when they they manage a game and run a game, that's like an intangible you don't really see. But I guess I see them; I, I, their at bats are more prevalent to me, and that's just been a disappointment. Yeah, that's a fair grade. Um, I did them individually, so I gave Jose Trevino a B minus um, because mm. I think he calls a great game. Uh, yeah. He's a good framer, and um, he uh, yeah yeah he's not a good hitter, but he. Does make some contact. Um, and then Higashioka, I uh, kind of like you, I'm, I'm over him. Um, so I gave Trevino B minus, Higashioka a D. Uh, probably harsh, but I'm kind of just done with the guy. Um, yeah. I'm ready for Roy Fed or Wells or whoever. Um, yeah. What about the rotation as a whole? What would you grade the starting rotation? <sighs> rotation as a whole, wow. It's That's a tricky one because they've been so all over the place. Yeah. But- solid to you know when you look at the stats it's it's like wow the, the you know if if the yankees didn't have this staff doing what they're doing um it, it'd be in last place with the way this offense has been so overall cole start off great cooled down a little bit um let's see nestor on the il rodon on the i haven't even seen him he's coming back next week though uh herman up and down uh johnny brito has had some moments um let's see and all those spot guys overall i gotta say for what they are B to B plus, maybe B plus just because the stats, you know, you look at those stats and they're the ones keeping them in games for the most part. All right. So I gave the rotation a C plus Mm. just because I, you know, they've been, you know, Garrett Cole has obviously been good. Um, He's pitching great. You're winning every game he pitches almost. Um, And then, like you said, a bunch of ups and downs. So, I feel like the rotation gets a C plus for me. Yeah. Um, but you yeah. go to the bullpen. Oh, I forgot right? Clark Schmidt in there who has Clark actually has... been pitching a lot better than early on in the year. Yeah. Early on in the year, I wanted him so gone, but oh, he's, everybody he's did, turned right? it around. Yeah. He's turned it around. <clears throat> Definitely, man. He's turned it around for sure. Um, what about the uh the bullpen? I gave the bullpen an A. We'll run through this one real quick. 
I gave it an A. Uh, I think they've just been remarkable. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I yeah. gotta agree with that. I would I would say probably A minus, uh, just because you know recently some guys have been a little bit off. But yeah, you look at their stats and they're they're ranking really high. Yeah, they're in, deep like, all over for the you know MLB. So, and then we'll wrap it up with this: uh, the Yankees as a whole. What do you grade the team? this year based on their expectation i am going to i'll let you go first and i'll wrap it up with my grade all right let's see as a whole well trying to think back to how i really viewed this team coming into uh this season and you know had a lot of question marks um you know not having aaron judge is um has obviously been terrible for the team and he was playing so well too so that's been unfortunate um so overall third place they're they're you know this offense has been just horrible lately i would say again i i'm probably in the range of c c plus uh yeah c plus like I, i've been trying to be nice and be in the b's but I don't know if I can do that overall, but it's, it's tricky because you got the offense and then you got the pitching staff. So where all those letter grades came in, may, maybe it is a B minus, maybe the yeah. pitching staff brings that up a little bit higher. I went C minus. Uh, oh, wow. I don't know. I just, I, I, it's just like, I'm not feeling it, man. <laughs> just, yeah. Like I, yeah, like I told you, man, I feel like this team, the way that Cashman constructed them, they have a high, uh, a high ceiling and a low floor. So like, I wouldn't yeah. be shocked again if they won 85 games, came in fourth place. But I also wouldn't be shocked if they found a way to 95 wins and, and came in second place. Like that's the way their roster is constructed, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so far, yeah, third place, uh, what, six, seven or so games above 500. Um, it's just not impressive to me. Um, so I, I, I gave him a C minus. Maybe that will change. Maybe we take two from Oakland and maybe we get, you know, jump started. We'll see. Um, yeah, man, yeah. I, I appreciate it. Uh, if you have anything else to add, let me know. No, but, uh, just, just the way this season has been going. It's like I was saying, you know, you take those games from Texas who are, I don't know what they are. There, there's something like 18 games above 500 in first yeah. place playing really well. And you, you know, you take those games and then you're like, this team is back. And then they lose to Oakland and you're like, yeah. what, what is going on? You, it, it, they, they really can't get figured out. I, I, I have no idea what's going to happen with this team and it's going to be another interesting trade deadline uh decisions to be made and unfortunately i think they're i think they're confident uh i think the front office is confident that you know they'll say all the things like oh yeah we can turn it around and we can make a run and look at where we are now you know we're in the second wild card spot so i think it won't be a rebuild retool i i I really think they're gonna keep going on the way they are they're playing this stretch of games where they're playing a lot of teams that aren't good and that could you know if they if they play well uh or decent they can keep that and stay up in that you know that just that medium range and then at the deadline they're going to be like oh well we got a shot um and make a couple of moves but I just think overall this isn't the year, but again, second half, a lot of things can happen, and and who knows when if Judge is coming back. So that's another big question mark. Yeah, I that'll be. We'll uh, see. They'll use the Aaron Judge excuse as their trade deadline acquisition. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that'll be that. That'll be that. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it, Greg. You got it, Rob. Anytime. All right. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, Again, Greg from Yankee Crazy Podcast joined the show for uh, a few minutes to talk some Yankees and go over progress reports. So reports. So I hope you enjoyed that part. It's always fun having him on. Uh, And again, go listen to Yankee Crazy Podcast. That's his own podcast that he has. And um, I'm sure this episode will be up on his 
platform as well. So I appreciate you all uh, stopping by, tuning in. Episode 536 is in the books. I'm your host, RJ, and I'll see you in 537. Go Yankees. This episode was brought to you by Anchor. Hey there. If you stayed the entire way through, we thank you immensely for it. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and that you come back for the next episode real soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, download these episodes, and share them with your friends as well. BD4 is a five-star podcast simply because of you, and we'd like to keep it that way. Have a wonderful day. Go Yankees, and go Knicks!